So I did some researching and turns out that there's not much help out there that's teaching people how to become an environmental engineer. Maybe on Google they're showing you like what they do, but it's not really like a step-by-step -step guide showing you how to become one. So I'm just gonna take a stab at it and hopefully this will help you out. But before I begin, I want to like, probably not humble brag here, but show you that I am at least legit. So I'm just gonna post somewhere over here, like my job title, my university degree over here, and maybe my engineering training certificate over here. I'm not a professional engineer yet. I still need to gain some experience, but maybe, you know, in a few years from now, I'll eventually become like a licensed professional engineer. Overall, I'm just showing you this so you can like, believe me when I'm saying that, like, you know, trust me, I am an environmental engineer. All right, with that out of the way, I'm gonna show you how to become one, at least in my country, in the United States. So if you're in a different country, you might be dealing with something else. And even if you're in the United States and you're not in California, your process might be slightly different. So even when you apply for the certificate, make sure you choose like the right uh, state that you're living in. So these steps are like gradual. I'm gonna be first pointing out that maybe starting in high school up until maybe your late 30s, this is when you can probably skip some steps if you feel like you've already advanced towards that. Okay, anyway, so now let's begin. The first step is you should have some general interest in like attacking climate change, pollution, be interested in like sustainability and the environment. So like that's the number one step. If you don't have any interest in this, like you're in the wrong field. Make sure that you see yourself doing this in the future because overall you don't really want to waste your time. The next step is that you should be somewhat good at like engineering and math and like you know the STEM related field because when you get into this field, of course you have to go to school. You have to be good at like the subject. You don't want to like fail all your classes and generally you don't have to be like the you know valid Victorian or anything like that. You just have to be able to be good enough to pass your classes. Alright, so you don't have to be like a genius or anything. Third step, and I'm talking to you high school students out there, so very young people here, is that when you're in high school, take as much AP classes as you can. This will save you a lot of time in college. So things like AP Calculus AB, AP Calculus BC, maybe like English Composition or AP History, AP Chemistry, AP Physics, all those things, as many AB classes as you can because, again, this is to save you time and you don't really want to suffer more in college in terms of like, you know, sleepless nights and paying more for tuition when you don't have to. So the faster you can go in and the less classes you can take in college, the better for you. Next is, I mean, this is probably the big chunk of it, is that you should go to a college or a university that offers some sort of bachelor's degree into environmental engineering. If you want to get a job as an environmental engineer, you should probably graduate as an environmental engineer. So like, this is pretty obvious here. I do realize though that sometimes some universities, they don't offer this type of degree. So what you can do is you can major in a field that's somewhat related to it. So when I mean somewhat, I mean things like environmental science, uh, chemistry, maybe biology, maybe physics, maybe math, like some sort of STEM related field. So something environmental related or something engineer related. But ideally, of course, you want to major in environmental engineering. That just makes it easier. All right, now you graduated as an environmental engineer or an environmental scientist, or you graduated with some bachelor's degree that's somewhat related to environmental engineering. Now you want to get a job, but let's say like most cases, you cannot find that perfect job right away. So what you have to do now is gain some sort of relatable skill or experience that's somewhat related to that field. I know it's difficult because like even for me, I graduated with a bachelor's in chemistry. And so all my exposure and my experience that I could probably receive is being in a lab. So that's not really environmental engineering related, right? Basically the only opportunity I had was to work in a lab. But if you're lucky, maybe you majored in engineering and then you were able to intern at like an engineering firm. So now you have like a better advantage compared to other people. But overall, you still want to have some sort of work experience. So some sort of work experience is better than nothing, of course, but still try to gain some sort of experience that's related to that field because you want to like show that you are trying to put your foot in the door and like work towards this career, right? Heck, even like working at like Starbucks is enough because that's like customer service. You'll be dealing with customers even in this field. You'll be talking to people, you'll be dealing with clients. So even something like Starbucks or even working at McDonald's, having that experience working in like a fast paced environment and dealing with customers, like that is still a valuable experience. So you still want to put that down. And I know this is going to be like the hardest part because you're really just trying to prove to like your employer or whoever the whole world that you can work in this field and that you are trying to start this career. So you're going to be 
trying everything, you're gonna be taking every single opportunity that you can. So you can be applying everywhere and you'll probably get rejected many times, but so long as you don't quit, eventually some employer will have to take you in. But this will be the hardest, longest, and most discouraging, disappointing part of like the entire process. If you've had like many, many years and you've tried countless times and you are still not even getting pointed out or mentioned or like you have no prospect at all, then what you can do is get your EIT, your Engineer and Training Certificate. So when I got mine, I actually got like a huge boost in terms of like now they're actually looking at me. Now I'm getting like recognition because I have that certificate. It just shows to them that you are serious. Even if your background is like way off, it's gonna look weird, but it proves that you are serious about changing fields. So what you do now is you go on the nces.org website, you fill out the form, choose your destination where you want to take your fundamentals exam, and you take a test. Once you take a test and you pass, then they'll give you that EIT, that certificate, proving to the whole world that like, you know, I'm serious about this. I'm serious about becoming like an environmental engineer. So once you get that certificate, you'll have an actual chance now at like engineering. Overall, that EIT may be more desirable. And so if you're having a very hard time finding a job or just getting your foot in the door, then I do highly recommend taking this EIT. And it did boost my confidence and boost my chances of starting this career. But that being said though, you don't have to get the certificate. It's not required for you to get the certificate in order to work. So I've seen coworkers who they just got their bachelor's in engineering and they're working. The bad thing about that is that they're sort of capped at how much they can grow. So if you are truly serious and you want to get like a professional engineering license, that's when you become a manager. That's when you can get paid more too actually. If you're just getting your bachelor's, like that's the starting step and that's you know, good enough for some people. But if you want to get to the next step, even higher, you can get your master's and you can get your PE, your professional engineering, and then that's when, you know, more opportunities open up. So talking about the PE, that brings me on to the next and last final step. Once you become a professional engineer, getting your PE, that means you've pretty much reached the top. Like you can't really go much higher than that. That's when you become like the manager of an engineering firm or Maybe you oversee a city or something like that. After you get your EIT, you need like three or five years of experience. You need some letters of rec, you need some more paperwork. You take another test, the professional engineering test, in whatever field you're interested in. And then that's when you become a licensed professional engineer. Once you get your PE, you are at that point, like the top tier level engineer that you can't really go any higher. At that point, you've earned more money, you've earned more respect. You're probably much older. You've you know taken at least five years of experience working in your engineering field. And honestly, not many people have this license, this professional engineering license, so it just makes you more rare and more valuable and more desirable. So that sort of just makes you like immediately hireable. Everyone's gonna want you pretty much because there's so few people who have this license. Okay, so in this video, at least the first half of this video, I showed you what you need, like your mindset that you should have in order to get into this field. In the other half of this video, I showed you what you should do in case you can't get your foot in the door or like, you know, you're trying to start this career. And it's like a stepwise process. So if you don't have the first half, then you cannot go on to the next half. Alrighty, hopefully I explained sort of well enough for you to start this career. I know not many people like are interested in this career, but it's a good field to look into in the future. All right, so hopefully this video helped and maybe one day I can like call you an environmental engineer, call you one of my colleagues, you know, hit me up. All right, goodbye.